Hi, everyone. Welcome to our fourth LinkedIn Live, where we're going to be talking about energy. Um, I'll introduce myself, and then Brad will introduce himself again. For those of you who are new to us, I'm Cheryl Cran. I'm the founder of Next Mapping, co-founder of SuperCrucialLeader.com uh, and Retreat. And uh, I'm very excited to be here with Brad to talk about energy and time today. So, Brad, go ahead with a, a quick self-intro, and then we'll get right into it. Hi, everyone. I'm Brad Brenninger, EVP of Strategy at BeliefCo and uh, leader of our AI uh, hub and innovation hub and uh, focused on helping clients with their brand, marketing, communication and everything else that they need. Wonderful. So here we are, our fourth LinkedIn Live, and we are here to talk about energy. And, and this is not necessarily purely esoteric, although it's probably not talked about, I would say, in most corporate spaces, Brad, where we talk about energy from a standpoint of it, it's really not about time management anymore. When you think of people who get a lot done, it's typically they have a tremendous amount of energy and energy, yes, physical energy, but also access to energy, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, but I would just love, Brad, to, to have your take on that from, you know, from your vantage point, when you see you're producing, people producing a lot of work or not a lot of work, what do you attribute that to from an energy lens? Yeah, I, I think the important thing here, Cheryl, is that it's it's about being able to tap into the energy that's required when uh, you need it. I think that we all, we're all really good at, um, you know, having peaks of energy or, and, you know, often we get valleys of energy. But if you look at great leaders, one of the things that they're able to do is they're able to soften those waves a little bit and really tap into the energy they need when they need it. And, you know, one of the things that I've learned from mentors and others in this area is that it, it, it's really about um, understanding how you can be effective and be a leader and be focused even when you might not be feeling it. So, you know, being able to tap into those reserves. Yeah. And so from a like energy standpoint, some people have a, a natural reserve of stamina, for example. Right. And I have done, and I know you have as well, Brad, and this is maybe going a little bit uh, off, off the corporate sort of normal cycle of talk around this, but I, but we're both good for this because we know that this is where things are and this is where they're going. Uh, but talking about energy from not an esoteric place of, oh, it's, you know, you can't see it, you can't touch it, but more of like, where does stamina come from? And so we're all familiar with mental resiliency, and we know that the mind informs the body and informs behavior. And mental resiliency is definitely part of time management and productivity for sure. But it's really from, in my experience, that when I am tapped into the unseen forces, uh, either through mindfulness or contemplation, which we'll talk about, and taking those moments of, of just gathering beyond um, the physical expectations or demand, uh, beyond being focused on what's happened in the past or what's coming in the future, but really being present, mm -hmm. um, allows me to then be really clear on, on time and priority. So what, what's your thought on that for yourself? Yeah, same thing, uh, Cheryl. I mean, I think that, you know, really using things like meditation and physical exercise and mental stimulation and all of those things to build up my resiliency across all of those areas. I think that it's it's really easy for us to become overwhelmed or for us to become, you know, um, burnt out or or any of those kinds of things. And I think it's about not only being able to tap into any reserves of energy, but understanding how to monitor your energy and understand how you can, you know, be showing up in a more consistent way. And I think often teams will look to us for that as well, because if we're in, for example, if we're in a, a period of joyfulness, it's really easy to tap into the, to the energy. But if we're in a, a period of crisis or if we're in a period of, you know, um, overwhelmed, overwhelmed, being, feeling overwhelmed or feeling um, overly busy, it, it's really easy to get burnt out. And, and, you know, a lot of times when you look at organizations where they just push and push and push folks without leaders being able to say, okay, here's how you monitor that. And here's how, how you get through these times and, and use these tools, right, to build up that resiliency. So the meditation, the exercise, the stimulation, all of those things that are going to drive you. 
Yeah, and so let's get into um, some of the content here. We're here to talk about energy is the secret to time management, lead with energy intelligence. And so really, when we did our polling, um, there was, we did a poll on LinkedIn that said, what is your biggest time challenge? And overwhelmingly, what people came up with was competing priorities. Mm -hmm. Now, there were four categories. One of them was, you know, having time to coach your people. Uh, one of them was, uh, you know, I think priorities. I can't remember the other two, but this is the one that came through as the top one. Mm -hmm. And so, Brad, and when you and I were having our prep for this LinkedIn Live, we were talking about like, so so really, what what are priorities? Like Like, there's physical priorities, and then there's the mental, like what we think is a priority. Right. And then there's expected priorities and right. then there's projected priorities. So let's talk about that for, for this, because I think it's really important for people to, to understand like priority, like sometimes somebody else's urgency become, they, they make it our urgency, but is it really a priority and where does it fit in our priority? You know, it's a great point, Cheryl. And I'll never forget my very first job. I worked in a warehouse. I was, um, I think I was about 15 or 16 years old. Um, and I worked on an assembly line and the the four person had a sign behind her desk um, that said, lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. And I'll, I'll never forget that sign. Right. I remember it to this day. And that was a few years ago. Uh, but But the reality is, is that, you know, often... Being able to identify priorities, being able to identify what's really important or asking the right questions to get to a place where you can, you know, really specifically say, OK, this is a priority and, and helping your team do that as well is, is an important part of the time management part. And, you know, because often when we are feeling overwhelmed or we're feeling burnt out, it's because we give equal measure to everything that's going on. And so. Right. You know, our brain shuts down first and then our body shuts down and then, you know, we're, we're just in a state of overwhelm. So so it's, it's really about understanding, number one, in order to reserve your energy and in order to make sure that your energy is in the right place, being able to identify the priorities and, and really give them the weight that they, they that they actually deserve, not just what outside forces or other forces are, are, are saying that they should be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so when we look at competing priorities, for me, um, and I learned this years ago, uh, but it's still relevant today, which is, okay, what are my list of priorities? However, we track that, you know, whatever system we use, technology, what, even AI can help us with our priorities. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so what priorities are critical? Like the question I ask myself is, what is it that I have to get done today that's critical to me achieving my goals uh, for now, somebody listening or watching could cr argue and say, well, it's all critical. Okay. Let's dial that back. Right. We can say that when we feel a false sense of urgency put onto us by everybody else, mm -hmm. it, it's really like, what are the true priorities? If I only get five things done today, what are the five that's going to move the needle forward as it relates to my people? In other words, a promise made to my people that I want to follow through on that strategically moves me towards achieving my goals uh, that at the end of the day, I feel good because I accomplished it. Like to me, those are the thought patterns around setting priorities. But I feel a lot of us, because we're in a real time reality of technology and access, mm -hmm. everything feels urgent. It's true. And 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 we're it's it's kind of thrust upon us that that things are urgent. We just got a comment in from one of our viewers, Cheryl. Uh, Carly yeah. George is saying time boundaries. I struggle with telling that someone else. I struggle telling someone else that their priorities are not mine. Ah, very Absolutely, good. Absolutely, Carly. I mean, I can I couldn't agree with you more. It, it's 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 probably one of the toughest things to do. One of the one of the tools that I kind of use is I I create a little bit of an energy map for myself and. Mm -hmm. I take a look at, you know, Cheryl, you brought up a really good point, which is what are the things that are most important? And the greatest example I ever had of this is that if you look at a surgeon in an operating room, there might be six things that happen to that patient during the course of whatever the surgery is. But a surgeon has to go in order of what is least and most likely to kill the patient. And, and you Correct. kind of just look yeah. at it from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. What are the things that are true priorities? And then how can you make that list for yourself, make that energy map for yourself, 
And once you've done that, if you're not minimizing all of the priorities, you're just giving them weight. And you're what you'll be able to do is say, look, this is the one that needs my closest attention right away. This is the one. So I'm going to put most of my energy there and I'm going to, you know, uh, distribute my energy among these other ones. I'm not going to completely take them off the list. And I think, Carly, one of the ways that you can deal with that is you can go back to that list and go to the person and say, look, I 100% understand that you need this, um, but I do have these other three things and they need to be done. I'm going to get to you fourth. I promise you I will get to you. Um, and then from there, we'll be able to move forward. But uh, please, please work with me here. I, I think that, you know, often you know, we talk about energy matching and a lot of times people will say, well, energy matching is that if someone shows up with a certain kind of energy, you match that energy. But I don't think that that's true because if you, if one person's in a bit of a chaotic energy and then you show up with a chaotic energy, that's terrible. So the way I look at energy matching is how can I work with someone to match their energy at a level that is going to bring us closer to neutral. So if they're in a chaotic energy, I will try to bring them into more of a calm energy and we'll land somewhere in that neutral space. Because if we can do that, then we can have a really strong conversation about how we get stuff done. Yeah. And it's interesting you use the word neutral because I would say that we do want to energy match when somebody is showing up inspiring and attacking, oh, yeah, sure. right? Yeah. I would only add to what you said to Carly, and I think it's a great comment, is time boundaries. Um, what we have to remember is different personalities have different time expectations. Mm -hmm. So a driver, everything is urgent. So if you've got somebody coming at you and they're always, it's always urgent, you do have to have firm boundaries with that driver personality and say, look, I've noticed a pattern. Everything for you is urgent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest possible way. And yeah. how can we negotiate our priorities here so that you're getting what you're asking me, but I'm, I'm also not stressed out because I'm making every one of your priorities my priority. That's one approach. Um, detailers, you know, a lot of times with priorities, it's like, if you say to a detailer, here's everything I've got work uh, that I'm working on, mm -hmm. which of these do you want me to give up based on your current request? That works brilliantly because you're giving it to them in writing. They rarely see it. Um, yeah. A socializer personality, that's like me. I'm a dancer so socializer personality. Um, I'm also bad with boundaries as far as, oh, everybody can do this. Like, let's let's make it happen. But I've gotten very good at what's reasonable, what's effective, knowing what, ev what everybody else has going on and keeping that mindful, but yeah. also then communicating expectation which is in our presentation here is communicating expectations. Say, look, I know I'm giving this to you. Mm -hmm. Here's the timeline. As long as I have it by next Monday, we're golden. So again, it time boundaries is really about really at what I would call crucial conversations, mm -hmm. um, really having those open dialogues around what really is a priority. Where does it fit with everything else that we've got going on? Agreed. So that's a great, a great comment. So it's interesting because in this literal world that we all live in, you know, there's the difference between hours spent and energy expended, right? So, so, you know, for me, hours spent doesn't necessarily mean I'm working hard. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Right, right. So a lot of people, especially in corporate, I find like, it's like, oh, well, you know, I, I have coach clients where they've said, well, I'm working overtime and that must mean I'm working harder than everyone else. It's, it's like, mm, well, hours spent doesn't necessarily mean that you're productive or you're being good with your time management. It just means you're spending hours. Right, Brad? It, it, it's true, Cheryl. And I think from a leadership perspective, often, you know, when our when our teams are looking to us, um, you know, uh, to inspire or to help or to support or any of those things, you know, one of the things that comes out all the time is how you show up is how they kind of take it. So if you show up efficient yeah. and quick and to the point and, you know, you're, you're, you're minimizing, um, you know, extra energy, that is a lesson. That's a great lesson. And so I'm always checking myself to say, look, am I, am I showing um, good energy here? Am I showing um, how I am, am showing up? Am I showing that I'm being productive and I'm not just, you know, going to be there for eight hours and do about an hour's work within that eight hours. Right. Because when people see that, then it creates this, 
this lowered energy of your team. You know, what the one of the greatest things about high performance teams and, you know, whether you look in sports, whether you look in corporate, whether you look in even, you know, things like, um, you know, gaming or whatever it might be, all high performance teams share a common thing. And that is, is that they use their energy in the most productive kind of way. So your, your phraseology there, Cheryl, about our spent doesn't mean energy. It, it, it's really true. Look yeah. at, look at the energy yeah. that is expended in Olympic games, for example, take bobsled, for example, it's yeah. what a couple of minutes, the amount of energy that, that's expended um, is, is it's like a burst. But the truth is, is that for months and months and, and even years before that, there's been a consistent energy. So even though you're seeing that burst of energy, the only reason that that energy can burst is because a consistency has been applied for such a long time. And teams work exactly the same way. It's, you can't, you can't just show up. You can't just show up. You have to be productive. You have to look at the expend of energy. You have to be consistent about it so that you can burst when you need to and quiet down when you need to, right? And it's, these are all elements of energy that we have to be really aware of if we're managing teams. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, you and I both have done a lot of, um, you know, personal work and, 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 you know, I've, I've done uh, Eckhart Tolle, Byron, Byron Katie, uh, Dr. Donald Epstein. Uh, I have always been fascinated with uh, psychology of human beings, but, you know, really also about self-awareness and how I'm, I'm leveraging energy. Right. So one thing I've noticed and from a pattern is for myself, when I am feeling, um, low energy or uninspired, or I'm feeling, obviously it takes way longer, more energy and takes longer to get done because I'm not, my cup isn't full. Right. So, but however, if I start my day and I do my mindfulness practice that I have, and by the way, I'm not telling people you have to sit and meditate for 30 minutes because that does not work for everyone. But for me, I have a practice that, you know, it's a standing meditation, almost like a Tai Chi plus, um, you know, uh, mindfulness activity. If I do that every morning before I start, um, I typically can stay centered and very productive because I'm I'm purpose driven versus just task driven, which um, is, is really, you know, the 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 key for me. And then also like this morning, you know, this will probably irritate a few people, but I apologize in advance if I tell you this. But I was up at, you know, 530 a.m. to go to my 630 workout class. And for me, that gives me energy. Right. I, I getting up and moving my body. Yes. Gives me energy. So Brad, yeah. It's, it's such an important part um, of, of reality, Cheryl, is that energy doesn't come from nothing. Like you don't, you don't lay down for eight hours to have the energy to be up for the next eight hours. I mean, unless you're sleeping, but if you're just <laughs> like a couch potato, that's not going to give you more energy. The extent, right. the expending of energy um, is actually a way to create more. And, and I think that that's an important part of, of how you have to look at it. it, it it's, it's really something that is, um, what, what's the line? Uh, an object in motion um, stays in motion, right? Like we're all yeah. objects in motion, if you think about it. And, and yeah. how are we using that energy? How are we applying it to all the different things that we have? You know, you brought up something that I think is is something that I share with teams all the time, and that is you know, um, you can't just be task focused. You have to have the bigger right. picture going on. Yep. If you just, you know, awaken in the morning and say, okay, I'm going to do this task. I'm going to get through my to-do list. I'm going to do task after task after task. That may work for a little while, but you're not fueling yourself in any way, shape or form. So the things that you're talking about, I don't think mine would be a, a 5.30, 6.30 a.m. workout. I tend to work out in the evening. That's right. just my way of going. But, but, but the truth is, is that, you know, it's these things. It's if, if meditation works for you, great. If yoga works for you, great. If working out works for you, great. But you need to find the things for yourself that are going to help spawn you into this place of energy where you are building a pool where you're building a reserve where you where you're building an approach right you're also training you're constantly training your body like an olympic athlete like being a leader 
is like being an Olympic athlete. If you're not training yourself, your mind, your body, your spirit, which is all the things that we've talked about through these LinkedIn's, you know, then are you really the best leader that you can be? That, that's what you have to ask yourself. Yeah. And let me just pause here for a moment before we keep going to say that these LinkedIn lives are just snippets of what we share in our super crucial leader retreats. And so this is just a piece of the dialogue. There are so many tips and tools and strategies and solutions that we dialogue in, in that format. So, so just a question for all of you that are, are listening or will be watching the recording or, or watching it live, you know, what's the difference between someone who gets a lot done and someone uh, seeming stressed, probably without seeming stressed and someone who doesn't. So in my experience, the difference is energy, that they are doing things to fill their cup. They have a perspective on uh, life that is, um, you know, more than task, which we'll get into. So, so what is energy intelligence or energetic intelligence? It, it's an awareness that and this is where it gets a little esoteric again. So, so stay with us. Um, it, it's an awareness that energy is actually unseen, timeless, and expansive. It, it is. It, it's not. We can't touch it. You can't see it. You can't taste it. You, but but it's there. It's what runs and holds everything that is that is um, you know in on the earth and in the planet and in the universe. And what's interesting as a human, though, is energy is fueled by emotions. So, Brad, you said earlier around, you know, if I'm angry or sad or if I'm joyful, um, the the emotions are what is what. So as a leader, if I'm angry, that emotion can be actual fuel for good, because if you're angry, it means something has to change. So from a psychological standpoint, but are we displaying that anger? Or are we channeling that anger out of a self-awareness? You know, how are we how are we managing that emotion of anger as an energy expression? But then higher than that is if if we're doing all the things that whatever it is for you that you need to do to keep your energy high and balanced and um, effective, whatever you're doing, if you're aware of your emotional connection, that is another form of self-mastery as a leader. Yeah. So for example, if I am frustrated, I know, okay, I need to pause. Do I need to go for a walk? Do I need to take some, some cleansing breaths? Do I need to do child's pose? <laughs> you know, depending on my environment, like, like what is going on with me right now that my energy is not uh, the best for, you know, supporting my team, myself, Brad, what would you say about that? Like energy is fueled by emotions and we can have two emotions at the same time. We talked about this when we were prepping. Yeah. A hundred percent. Often we do. I mean, yeah. often we do have multiple emotions all going on at once. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, a great example of this for me, Cheryl, is that I, I kind of wear my heart on my sleeve a little bit. And one of the things I've had to teach myself is to not kind of jump into the emotional part of it right away, but to take a, a, a beat, take a breath and yeah. say, okay, this is this is how I'm feeling. And, and like you said, whether it's highly joyful, whether it's highly angry, whether it's frustrated, wh whatever the emotion might be, and really focus on what is the learning here? What am I actually learning from this emotion? Why am I having the emotion? What caused it? What's driving it? Because these are all the questions that your team is going to ask. Because if you feel a certain way about a situation, there's a really good chance that others on your team, if not your whole team, are going to feel the same way. Um, so you kind of have to get a handle on it and say, okay, what is the, as you said, Cheryl, what is the learning here? What is what is the positive that I can pull from this? What is the um, teachable moment that yeah. I can bring back to the team to represent you know, how we can move forward from here. And, and, you know, I do think that leadership mastery is very much tied into energy mastery. It's, yeah. it's, you know, you see these leaders who fly off the handle at the slightest whim, or you see leaders who, you know, are just monotone all the time. And, you know, a lot of times if you pulled their team or asked their team, they would say, well, they're either not really inspiring or, well, they're inspiring, but I'm kind of afraid of them a little bit. You know, so so I think that where where you see the greatest leaders, it's not the leaders who are afraid to share emotion. It's the leaders who are able to share emotion, but then very quickly put it into context. And ultimately, 
for me, those are the greatest leaders. Those are the ones who can take passion and emotion and all of these very human parts of who we are and contextualize them and meld them with the mindfulness, with the analytics of our brain in order to deliver something that is real, that is authentic, that is in context, but that is also, you know, something that can be inspiring. Yeah, what I like about what you're saying is, and I think Brene Brown said this, like your energy makes itself known before anything else, oh, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, energy intelligence is really owning uh, how we are tapping in. Like when I say energy is unseen, timeless, and expansive, I'm going to guess that every single person connecting to this message has had those moments where you actually felt more than your human self. So you felt timeless, you felt bodiless, you felt uh, connected to something more than your human self. And I believe that this, you know, as we, AI is ramping up and technology is ramping up, this is another very human element that that AI and robots don't have is that connection to, uh, dare I say the word soul, like the soul of being human. And the best leaders are those that have that sense of awareness of their energy and how it impacts others. Um, and, and really the difference is, are we coming from survival mode when it comes to time and priority, which is task focus, which you mentioned earlier, Brad, mm -hmm. um, with your team, or are we, because when you're tapped into that, that, that energy, and by the way, mindfulness every day reminds me of that because we can get caught up in that, you know, the human go, 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 mm -hmm. which um, definitely, you know, I'm a, I'm a, recovered workaholic. <laughs> so definitely easy to go into that survival mode and task focused versus a really purpose driven impact focus. So if, if I'm tied into the energetics and I'm filling my cup and I'm reminding myself that I'm more than what can be seen, then I am reminded of my purpose. What, why am I here? What is my impact on people? What, what, what am I hoping to achieve? What is my legacy? What do I want to be remembered? for? Those are all purpose-driven questions. Mm -hmm. And your time and your priorities become, when they're shaped by that, it really becomes like, what is my why and why am I doing this? And and I, I think another thing I heard years ago is, is what I'm doing today so important that I'll remember it five years from now, yeah. right? So so when it comes to priority, having that lens as well can be very helpful. What, what are your thoughts on that, Brad? Yeah. I mean, I think purpose-driven, you know, it, it's being a purpose-driven leader is about also leading a purpose-driven life. You can't you can't just say, yeah. "Oh, I'm going to be I'm going to be this kind of leader," but then you don't do the things that lead yeah. you to being that kind of leader. Because, you know, we all have worked for those folks throughout our careers where, you know, they'll say something, but you know, it's just so inauthentic because they don't really feel that way. Or, you know, it's exactly what you said, Cheryl the energy shows up and the words are different than the energy. So you're feeling this energy, you're feeling the vibe, but then you're hearing these words and you're going, no, Not matching. I don't, I don't yeah. believe you at all. Right. And, and you can't be an inspiring leader. You can't be a leader that gets a team rallying if you are not authentic, right? Authentic is, is one of the most important parts of being a leader in the age of AI. It, it really is because there's so much information and facts out there that, you know, you can be fact checked pretty darn quickly if you're yes. not, if you're not being authentic. So, so you really have to tap into that, that piece of it. So, you know, going back to the purpose driven, obviously Simon Sinek, you know, yeah. start with why is always a, a, a great read. Um, read that whenever you get a chance. Um, but, but really that, um, purpose-driven, impact-focused is you have to be thinking about that bigger picture. It's not that the tasks aren't important. And this goes back to what Carly was asking earlier. Yeah. You know, there may be tasks where you have to give bad news and say, oh, I might not get to that right away. Um, but if it if it feeds into your overall purpose-driven, impact-focused direction, then yeah. it's perfectly fine. You feel, you feel, justified in doing that. You feel authentic in doing that. And the person on the other end of that energy will feel that from you. If you're just 
telling them, oh, you can't get to it because you can't be bothered or it's too much or whatever, they're going to feel that too. So to that point, you know, melding these things together and, you know, taking it from that task focus into that purpose driven impact focused area is such an important part of, of how you show up. Yeah. And I think one of the ways to, to know where you are with this is like a self-regulating tool on this is yeah. you can feel it in your energy. It's like, ah, frantic. Oh, I've got all these things to do. Oh, and then I got, and you're rushing from next call to next call or next task to next task. And that just having that, that observer self of you being able to go, wait a second, take a beat here. Cheryl, yeah. are you what, you know, you're caught in that, that survival task trap. Again, none of this is about shaming or blaming or making no. ourselves feel bad. This is just all about awareness. Yeah. And so for me, I know that if I'm purpose driven and impact focused, my energy is high. I can get a lot done. Um, Brad, I'm sure you're the, exactly the same, right? It's yeah. true, uh, Cheryl. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, one of the, one of the things that is true um, over the last several years is that it's almost like busyness has become a currency, right? Like it's it, like the first thing out of so many people's mouths is, oh my God, I'm so busy. Oh my right. God, I'm so busy. And it, it's almost like, you know, when you hear, when I hear someone say that, I think to myself, well, what are you busy doing? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. not, not that I would judge or not that I don't think that they have a lot on their plate. It's more around, you know, are you, is your time, are your time management skills not great? Um, did you take on too much? Are you a yep. pleaser? Did you say yes to everybody? Like yep. what are the, what are, so I don't necessarily see I'm so busy as a um, badge you know, of honor. Yeah. Yeah, a badge yep. of honor. Yep. What I do see as a badge of honor is, you know what? I have a lot on my plate, but I really would love to get to what you need. So tell me about it. Right. Like when people say that kind of thing to me, yes. all of a sudden I know now that their energy focus is they might be very busy and they might have a lot on their plate. Right. And they might be stressed out. And that's right. fine. Right. But it's yeah. not like they're using the energy as an excuse. They're using the energy to drive them to the next next thing. Well, to that point, when people say I'm busy and I, you know, I do a lot of coaching, you do a lot of coaching. It, it's like. So my question when I'm coaching is, so let's talk about what you're busy doing. <laughs> yes. and, and oftentimes what they're busy doing are not related to impact focus or purpose focus. It's all yeah. about, and so it's, yeah. it's helping them reframe that to, because yeah. I, I very much am conscious of not saying that, Brad, when people ask me, Yeah. because you're right. The, the perception nowadays is busy doesn't necessarily mean effective. Right. You could just be busy doing a lot of stuff, but your results aren't necessarily speaking for that busyness, right? Maybe you change, maybe we change it, Cheryl. After after the retreat, people are going to be like, oh, sorry, I'm just being so effective right now. There we go. That's a better phrase. It's a better <laughs> phrase. I'm, I'm effective getting yeah. things done I'm right just, now. I'm just being so right. effective right now. Um, and I can't say yes to what you're asking me because I'm busy being effective on these other things. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know so, if it'll catch, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe, try. maybe it'll go viral, Brad, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? So let, you know, more perspectives on energy, you know, this is huge. We talked about this, Brad, you know, expectations of, of self and others. So we can have an expectation of like, I want to get it all done. Cause I'm, I really don't want to let people down, you know, or I, I, I I'm going to say yes, because I don't want to be the bad person. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all sort of self expectations. Yep. But the expectations of others comes back to that whole personality piece. And, and many people today have done DISC or what's your color or, you know, yeah. all those personality programs. Yeah. But, but really understanding how you are with expectations, because your personality is going to determine your self-expectation, but also the expectations you have of others. Projection is another one. So we might project like the self projection is, Oh, well, if I say no to this, this person's going to think badly of me. So that's a self projection, but a projection on others might be, Oh, I know this person well enough that if I don't do this, 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 and this is going to happen. Yeah. So projection is another, like we're projecting expectation when in fact, I know when I have crucial conversations and say to someone, so what's your expectation on this? They're usually like, Oh, I don't need that for four days. Perfect. But if, unless I ask the question on the expectation, I'm projecting an expectation and that's the trap. 
It's that is so that right there, what you just said, Cheryl, <laughs> is such an important part of what people can take away from this LinkedIn live. That that one thing, it's we often, you know, and this is why energy is so important because if someone comes to you with a request and you're in chaotic energy, you immediately apply chaotic energy to that request and you do exactly what you just said. And I've, yeah. I've done it myself I, and recently. So I, I, you know, I, one of the things that I try and do is I try to catch myself, right? Even mm -hmm. though I talk about this and I, I try to manage this way, I'm not immune to the effects of it. So I totally right. understand it. Um, you yeah. know, it's, it's, you 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 bring it in and all of these psychological barriers that you have whether it's you know pleasing or projecting or whatever those are all factors and then on top of that the energy layers yet another complication on top of it and all of a sudden now you feel overwhelmed or you feel inundated yeah. and so it's yeah. really about you know understanding what the expectation is and asking the right questions not projecting, but but ex like having a conversation and listening and active listening to what they're actually asking you to do. And if it requires a negotiation, then move into that negotiation at that point and figure it out. And then and then you can make a promise. Then you can really say, look, I can't maybe do it within the timeline. You know, I always I always had these conversations with the team. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too busy saying yes to everything, or I say no to, or I need to start saying no to things. And I say, no, 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 you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. It's not a question of saying yes or no. It's a question of how can I help and when, right? If you yeah. reframe yeah. it to how can I help and when, then all of a sudden now you can negotiate on an agreed upon solution. You can arrive at it. And then it's, it's, you're not basing it on expectation. You're not basing it on projection. You're understanding what the why is, which is the ask. You understand the priority parameters so that you can go back to your own energy map and put it, slot it in where it needs to go. And then and then you can always give an energetic yes because you're like, okay, well, yes, I can. If, if, if we're able to work within these parameters, then yes, I can give you my full energetic yes to be part of this with you. Yeah, and so I love this. I just love... I love these dialogues. So the priority parameters, I just had a situation with that, this with someone on my team where this person is a video person that I work with and have worked with for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And he knows me well enough that everything's a top priority. Yeah. <laughs> like he knows me like, Cheryl, you want this yesterday, right? And so he'll joke and he'll say that to me. But you know what? Mutual accountability is so if I were not self-aware of my impact and my energy, I could just go, yeah, he knows me. He look at him. He's accommodating me. But that's not the well-being of the relationship. No. So what I do is I know myself. I know I do that. So this, the priority parameter for this one is you've got until next week. And, and he, he was just like, oh, hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> right. You know? yeah. and, but when he says, I know you want it yesterday, it's like I come prepared knowing that, that that's his expectation. But I don't want to play that way because that's not who I want to be. I don't want to put stress on other people. Yeah. I want things done, but I want them done in a collaborative collegial way. Does that make sense, Brad? A hundred percent, Cheryl. Yeah. I mean, you know, the other, the other thing too, is that you have to look at, you know, you said it earlier, what is, how do you want to be seen? What is your legacy? Like all of these things feed into that. You could be the smartest person in the room. You could have, you know, the most clients or the most patients or the most, whatever you deal in. But if, if people don't um, respect you, if people don't want to follow you as a leader, then what do you really have? You know, at the end of the day, we're not lone wolves here. We, we operate as a society. We operate as teams. We operate collaboratively most of the time. And, you know, for a lot of leaders, the reason that they're leaders is because they have a team and that is a collaboration. So if you are not paying attention to the, those energy elements, you're, you're fulfilling or not fulfilling a third or more of who you need to be as a leader, right? Yeah. And the energetic yes is really that, that gut check. So you've, you've got the mental, you're like, you're, you're doing all the practical thinking of timelines yeah. and what else you've got going on. Yeah. You, you're, you're looking at, you know, is this a task or is this, you know, uh, something that's purpose-driven? 
that energetic yes comes from that place that you said earlier, like, how can I help? Yeah. And and I think that, you know, that's that that statement, how can I help, is a servant leadership statement. Yeah. Now, I've been at the leadership game a long time. You have been too, Brad. And I will get people who say to me, but Cheryl, if I'm always saying, how can I help, then I have no time for myself. Let me say that it's how can I help myself through energy management yep. to be able to give an energetic yes so that I'm helping others. And that's the key right there, Cheryl. It's it's not... It's not how can I help at the detriment of my own mental health. No. It's it's how how can I help? I mean, if if you break that phraseology down, it's the how so that you understand what is being asked of you. Yeah. You know, and and help is not do it for you, not no. take over, but support you. And and then, you know, and, and you know, we said this earlier, but then it's a negotiation. How can I help? They tell you and then you negotiate where you land together. Right? That's right. And that ultimately is how you help manage that. Energy. That's right. Yeah. And just as we wrap up, we have some suggested actions for you. Um, you know, again, contemplation. I love this. Um, th- there's something called the gene keys that I'm studying right now. Um, and I just, Richard Rudd is, is just a brilliant, brilliant person around presence and, you know, um, human design. And he makes a really good point that meditation is something that people feel stressed about. Interestingly enough, they hear the word meditation and they think it's one more thing that they should be doing. Right. Um, he, he, he says, let's, let's put it on the premise of contemplation. So even if you took five minutes every few hours to just back away from all devices you don't have to close your eyes. Gwyneth Paltrow is talking about open-eyed meditation right now is a thing that's going around where you just literally, and I do this in my office, I'm in my home office right now, like just literally staring off into nature because I happen to be in a very rural area, right? And just staring off and just giving myself like just my freeing the brain from, you know, normal things. And just doing that gives more energy to come back. Yeah. Um, those mindfulness moments, you can close your eyes for those, or, you know, even watching, like I have your nature bathing, uh, real is best, uh, but virtual works too. I mean, how many of you have watched a funny cat video or, <laughs> or, you know, you've listened to an ocean or you have, you know, um, a, a YouTube video that you watch that just zens you out. Like, like those moments of energy reminders, um, you know, Brad, you said reading, you know, Simon Sinek's book. Yes, I think everybody should read it, but not everybody's a reader. So listening to audiobooks or watching videos or anything that's inspiring. Um, well, before, music. I yeah. have I have a playlist, Cheryl. Yeah. I have a yeah. playlist that I call the meditate playlist. I am not a meditator personally without yeah. music. And so you know, if you need a catalyst, music is an incredible catalyst for it. It is. It gets you into a zone that's yeah. outside of the mental mind for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, attending a retreat with energy intelligence on the agenda. I think I know of one. Do you know of one, Brett? <laughs> yeah. I think I, I, think I do. <laughs> and then finding an energy intelligent coach. Many leaders uh, have coaches, have worked with coaches, but we are at a time now where we need we need coaches who get the whole big picture. They, they yeah. get the, the AI, they get the technology, they get the leadership principles, and they know what it means to lead effectively, but they also understand this energy component from a place yeah. of not woo-woo, not, you know, esoteric out there, but from a real place of energy is the new currency of the future. I firmly believe that, yeah. Brad. A hundred percent, Cheryl. And, and, you know, in, in you know, for me... The, the idea of just being thoughtful a few minutes a day, you know, we, it's really easy to get into back-to-back meetings. It's really easy to get inundated with a whole bunch of things going on, but, you know, you need to be able to replenish yourself. And, and sometimes that doesn't take very long. You know, sometimes, like you said, you can just nature bathe or, or watch a funny video or listen to a piece of music, whatever that might be. The thing that it does, though, it also takes you out of your head because as humans, it's really easy for us to get in our heads sometimes and be in the situation or the problem or the crisis. Or, you know what, sometimes we're so highly in the joy, too, that we don't see the eventual pitfalls that are around the corner. So, you know what, it's not always negative emotion that that makes us ineffective. Sometimes overly positive emotion can make us ineffective as well. So it's, it's about taking yourself out of the moment that you're in, putting yourself in another moment, 
just so that you can build that clarity of thought and then get back into it with that clarity of thought. And, yeah. you know, again, it goes back to this idea of training yourself to do that. Like, yeah, those, those right. tips that, that, you yeah. know, put together, pick the ones that work for you. Maybe you're not a meditator. That's fine. Pick the ones that work for you and just train yourself to yeah. enable your mind to, to, you know, come out of your, your thoughts. For a minute. You said it really well earlier. And I think we'll close off with this, which is if you're a leader, then you're invested in what that means for leadership mastery, which means energy mastery. And, and um, I highly recommend checking out Dr. Donald Epstein's book, the seekers code. Um, yeah. We've only talked surface about energy today. Yeah. There is a, there is a very wide uh, application to what we're talking about today that could go even deeper that we would talk about uh, in the retreats. But there are a lot of experts out there that talk about it from a variety of angles. So I hope that everyone got value today out of this, Brad. A reminder for everyone to check out supercrucialleader.com. Yeah. Uh, to, if you have any questions for us, please uh, email us through the website. And uh, you can actually give us your email at the website, and then we can keep you on top of all of our activities that we're doing here at Super Crucial Leader. So yeah. thank yeah. you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Take Bye -bye. care.